So coronaviruses are a family of viruses. So they're one type of virus. Uh, there are RNA viruses and DNA viruses, and coronaviruses are RNA viruses. And most animals have their own coronaviruses, and humans have coronaviruses as well. Up until SARS in 2002, all the human coronaviruses that we knew about caused only mild illness. And we also believed at the time that animal coronaviruses stayed within the species that they infected. So what's happened since then in the last two decades is that we've had two instances and now a third of a novel coronavirus that comes from an animal source into humans and causes disease in humans. So it's a virus that crosses the species barrier from an animal host into humans and causes disease. And now this new virus that emerged in, in Wuhan, in China, in late December, belongs to the same family of coronaviruses and is related to, but not the same as SARS. That's a good question. We don't know in this instance how it happened, but we know from the two instances in the past, for SARS and MERS, that these are viruses that cross the species barrier. In the case of SARS, they were from wet animal markets in southern China, where wild animals were in marketplaces and people um, were exposed to them. So this new virus is most closely related to some viruses from bats, but whether there's an intermediate host as happened with the SARS outbreak in 2002, where the markets had civet cats that were a, an immediate host. So if you trace it all the way back, it's probably from bats, but we don't know whether these infections in Wuhan, in the markets, were from bats directly into humans or whether they went through an intermediate animal species. So the reason for concern is it's a new virus that people have not been infected by before. It's causing very significant amount of severe disease and causing deaths. And it's now spreading from person to person rather than just from animals to people. And it appears to be spreading through the respiratory route. When a virus transmits from person to person via the respiratory route, it can spread very extensively and be very hard to control. And of course, today with international travel, the world's a very interconnected place. And so even though the outbreak was identified in a limited area, as we know already, there's been spread to several countries. it would feel like any other severe respiratory infection. People are presenting with fever and respiratory symptoms. That can include a cough, it can be a productive cough, it can be a dry cough, shortness of breath, palpitations in some cases. Some people are complaining of tiredness. In SARS, there were a proportion of people that had diarrhea. So the relative risk to the ordinary Australian comes from either travel to China or at this point exposure to people that have returned or who have acquired the infection from return travellers. The World Health Organization, the state and Commonwealth um, public health authorities are releasing guidelines so people should be aware of what's going on, contact their general practitioners if they develop any symptoms or of respiratory illness and a fever or shortness of breath, a cough, especially if they have an exposure. Otherwise, good hand washing, good cough etiquette, sneeze etiquette, so sneeze into your elbow, wash your hands frequently, and keep in touch with what's going on as this outbreak evolves. The usual answer is years, but the scientific technology that's available is phenomenal. And nowadays, people can develop vaccines without ever working with the infectious virus. So you can work from the genetic sequence. Even with SARS 19 years ago, there were many different vaccine strategies that were developed. So we do have collected over the last 19 years a number of potential strategies that could be used for this. What's changed in the last few years is that we now have proven success in both evaluating vaccines and antiviral strategies during an ongoing Ebola outbreak. It's challenging, but it can be done.